Well, I couldn't resist coming down fishing this morning. Really stormy. It's the week after we had the, the Tench Fest, uh, the Masterclass and the Angling Trust, Trust here at uh, Mill Lane. And although I did come down on Sunday, I struggled. But this morning, it's really stormy. Set the alarm for half three. I looked, got the baits out after a quick look around. Spommed out, had some bubbling. I think I've probably got the rods out about quarter five and it was eight minutes past five when this one ripped off. I'm guessing it's about getting on for seven and a half pound. I will weigh her. Huh? Rods are back out, but uh, there's loads of fish showing, so I'm confident of uh, catching a few more. I'll keep you informed. Well, I thought the, uh, the early alarm clocks were going to actually finish and I'd have a lay in but the tench seem to be feeding later and later this year it's mid-July now it's a week after the Angling Trust uh, tench masterclass was held where over 80 tench came to the net plus a few carp and some bream so I couldn't miss and come down there again the alarm was set at half past three I think the rods went out just before five and I've already had a tench at about you know just after five the worm kebab ripped off and um, yeah, there was lots of fish out there. The wind's pushing down into this sort of bay and there was a few bubbles come up and then the old rod sang its tune. Uh, that fish was about, I did weigh it seven pounds, seven ounces. So a great start. I'm hoping to get a few more. Um, yeah, so uh, it's Mill Lane that I'm fishing. A venue that I love, a venue, a venue that I struggled with early on in the spring and almost rode it off because uh, it just wasn't happening but all of a sudden these tents have just gone a, on a feed in frenzy and I'm guessing that they're, they haven't spawned yet and they're sort of just coming up to that so the rods are back out, they're both on the worm kebab but I might actually tie up a, a, a tea rig, a Tony King tea rig because that's what a lot of the fish came out with last week so um, that's a bit of uh, you know, cheers Tony, open my eyes that did so uh, don't get stereotyped if I get another one, I'm going to change one of those rods because when you change to a different method that you, you don't have the confidence on or you haven't used, it's best to do it when you're catching fish. So, as I said, the rods are out. I'm going to have a cup of tea and um, I'm pretty confident that we'll get another one, if not, a few more. Well, about half an hour's passed since I uh, had that first tench and although there's been some bubbling out there, nothing further has happened, so... I'm just going to try and work on a little assumption that every time I catch a fish I'm just going to put a single small spodlow over the top, mainly maggots because I want to go on the tea rig and give it a go and I'll get, get them rummaging around, a little bit of chopped worm and a tiny bit of hemp that I've started to bring into my fishing. So just aiming to swim on the far bank, all clipped up nicely. And I'm just putting one rod left and one rod right of that. And just hopefully, just like building a swim slowly, little and often, fishing for one bite at a time. Hopefully, something further will happen. Well, I'm into my second tench. I didn't actually think that was going to happen. There's been some bubbling out there, but... Uh, just couldn't get a bite. I was just about to change to a tea rig, which I'm going to do anyway now because I've had two bites on the worm kebab and it'd be just nice to, to catch one on that, my first one, and uh, get some confidence. That's on the left-hand rod, so I've had one on both rods now. As I say, last week we had this tench masterclass where a few of the tench fishers came down, people like Di Gribble, Tony King, absolutely, you know, some of the best in the country, if not the best. Learnt loads, even myself, had a great day. And um, one guy caught, I think it's uh, two scale at 40 pound, 14 ounces on a tea rig and tench kit. And I did actually take some video coverage, which I will show in in this video for you. 
There's also some double figure bream. Quite a few small bream, which is really, really nice. Um, and although there was over 80 tench, there was 80. Oh. Carnage. It's all right, let's see what's happened there. Whoa. Cool, lively one. Whoa. Come on. Why are you caught on there? Caught on the little, caught on the bit of elastic. Unbelievable. Not brilliant, but I was going to change one of these rigs anyway, so. Uh, that's why it's not a tench it's <coughs> pike. <coughs> things. As you can see, long and lean. About as healthy as a flipping. Well, I'm not going to go there. Well, it's quarter to seven now, and I'm amazed I haven't had another tench. I thought I had the second tench, but unfortunately, it was a, a pike that seemed to uh, like the old worm kebab. And so what I've just done, because it actually took the other rod out and gave me a few problems, I just run through worm kebab again. I've got a, like a two and a half ounce medium sized block end feeder, which is stuffed full of chopped worm, some maggots, a couple of float stops, a little swivel, tape sleeve, which acts as a boom. I've got about nine pound fluorocarbon hook link down to a size 10, Barbless beast hook, and as you can see, a nice bunch of wiggly worms, hence why the pike like it, sandwiched between two, two casters. I'm using 12 pound line, low diameter black magic again, and this is what I would call naked, as in I've not got a leader. Uh, as I say, I've just changed over to a T-rig on the left hand rod, and I would love that to rip off and catch my first tench on it to give me a bit of confidence not that I haven't got any confidence because I've seen so many tench caught on this last week but it's always nice to get one on the rod so uh, yeah plenty of videos on the worm kebab old ones on my YouTube um, absolutely superb rig give it a go please be a tench Lots of bubbles just come up after I hook that one. This is the worm kebab again. I wish it had been the tea rig, but I'm just going to drop this rod down so I don't have the same problems as I had earlier. A bit of head shaking, which is never what we like. That was on the T rig. I don't know if I've got a double hook up here or I'll pick this rod up because I don't, don't know at the moment. Try and get this fish out over here. Why is it if I hook one on the left hand rod it goes right and if I hook one on the right hand rod it goes left. 
causing me a few problems because this whim is a little bit tight. I don't know yet. Just concentrate on this one. Please be a tench, don't be another one of those toothy critters. Yeah, that's what we came for. Big old splash of the tail. Not a big one. Angry male. Happy days. It's amazing, I've just taken some pictures of a moor hen that's feeding her chicks at a oh, size, you know, no more than like a ping pong ball. Tiny, and it's middle of July, what is going on? It's like saying, Mill Lane normally, when you come tench fishing. Oh no, can't believe that. Tony King. You're a bloody star. Cracking drop back. On the tea rig, loads of bubbles come up. I've got to admit, I'm having a bit of a mare. What with that pike taking the rod out? And then losing that last tench. But you know what? If this one comes in, it goes in the net, I'm only on a size four t uh, 12 hook, so I've got to be very careful. I'll be very happy. You can see I've lowered that rod, or the rod tips down. And what this fish has gone well right, as I said, every fish I hook is going over the other rod. It's a bit of a nightmare swim, because it ha is getting really tight compared with what it used to be. Got a carp angler to my right off the point and I think he's got a bait quite close in. So as you can see I've gone on a leader here. Absolutely superb, as I say. Never caught one on a tea rig, never used one, never felt I had to because the worm kebab has served me so well. But we had to give the uh, angling trust three words to become a good tench angler. And one of them I was going to say, although it's like two words, is open minded. And sometimes you can get really stuck in your ways. I wish this fish would come away from the other rod. <laughs> Open-minded because, yes, you can have what you call a confidence rig. And as people know, I love the helicopter rig and double red maggot. I also love the worm kebab, but now I do like the tea rig. And that's a proper fat one. Not huge, but proper fat, just to show they haven't finished spawning. And just to prove that was on a tea rig. There you got it. Two fake maggots and a big belly. Well, the rain stopped nice. I've had, got my waterproofs off. Tension bubbling. This one's come along, proper fat one. I'm not gonna weigh it, I would say about six pound. Cracking tench, but what's made this session really, really special is I've caught that on a tea rig. Something I learnt and saw Tony King demonstrate last week at the, uh, Angling Trust 
tench master class, watch how it worked in the uh, water tank. You can actually go to the tench fishers website, there's a video there, and check it out. It obviously works. I've caught a fish on it, cheers Tony. Um, and that has really, really made my day. I lost one as well on the worm kebab, one of those mouths that surge under your rod tip and uh, if you haven't got your clutch or your back wind set correctly, it just takes you by surprise and uh, the hook pulled and one of those pesty pike. So uh, yeah, cracking session, not going to plan, a bit frustrating at times, but this fish has made it all worthwhile. <laughs> well, it's half past nine or just gone and uh, very little has happened. I had one drop back that I missed, probably a pike. I've just had a couple of bleeps round in my rod and my worms have been stripped off by a little perch. My microphone's just about to die, so I'll make it quite quick. Three chances this morning for tench. Unfortunately, I dropped one, a bit of a schoolboy error. I should have known that when that fish gets under your rod tip, expect it to surge. Two tench, um, a fat six and a, and a nice mid seven. One on the T rig, which was really made my day. So that's plenty to come back and experiment on that. I noticed when I did spawn some bait out, the fish were bubbling really, really quickly. But about quarter to eight this morning, the lake just died, no bubbles. I've seen very few fish move since then. And I just get this gut feeling that it's all over now. Normally I would fish till 11. I always say bite time seven to 11, but for some reason, they all, you know, all the action came really, really early. So I'm going to call it a day. As I said, loads learnt, go back. I might make a tea rig up with a, a, um, a braided hair just to give it a bit more flexibility. Um, we'll see, but um, the only thing that's eating my, uh, my bait at the moment is a moorin feeding uh, three little chicks here. So um, they might even come here. There's three tiny little chicks. Come on, are you coming? No, they are absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny. So a few days old, I would think those. You might just see one come down to the side of me, three of them. So yeah, we call it a day. Um, really enjoyed it. That's a standard meal lane morning, I would say. Quite often it's a blank. Three chances, I would say, was quite good. I'd be happy with that any day. Uh, now and again, you can get six or seven which I would say is great and then you get the old red letter days that a couple of the guys had in the uh, tench fishing masterclass last week where um, you can get you know a dozen or 15 so uh, yeah hope you learn a little bit um, and uh, I might come back next week for one last go because I've got loads of worms. Uh, I don't think you're deciding that. No I think you're right actually <laughs> yeah I think uh, Down in peck 40 with Tony and Chris. Um, as if Chris hasn't caught enough fish over the last 48 hours, he's now got a very big carp on his line. If it's just hours, I mustn't swear. Don't swear. So what's the matter with them? Nothing, Yogi. Don't they hang on? Yeah, someone with longer arms, you'd probably get it in a bit quicker. It's it, Stuart. <laughs> Oh, come on. I think Stuart's just had a run next door as well. Come on. What do you call a big carp on the tench kit? Well done, well done, chaps. Well done, Chris. Well done, Tone. Not only that, that's a PB carp for me, so. <laughs>